Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. Here we have the Lenlock T-handle. Now what makes these ones good is that when you rotate the key and you remove it, the handle either is engaged or clutching. So for it, when it's locked, the handle clutches and the shaft doesn't drive. So you can't actually force this handle around. A lot of these locks are defeated by somebody coming along and just forcing it. Because this one has a clutching mechanism, it's far stronger. To unlock the lock, you simply just put the key in, rotate it 180 degrees, and then it's engaged, and the back of the lock will um, drive the shaft. On the front there, you can see a little lock and unlock symbol with the Len lock. So it's a pretty good lock. I mean, I'm very happy with it compared to all the other locks, T-handle types out there on the market. I find this one to be one of the best. Very sturdy, very solid, better quality, better build. Somebody said to me the other day, oh, how do you rekey it? And I said, well, it's, it's not that hard. So we're gonna, I'm just going to show you how to rekey it. There's two screws on the back here. We'll just remove them. This back shaft can also be uh, changed for a longer one. This one here is, I think, 80 mil. You, we do have 100, 120 mil ones, so you can actually cut them down, make it longer and cut them down if you wish. So there's the tail right there. It's just got a little... Um, what do we call it? Uh, uh, pin? No, it's a roll pin. It's got a little roll pin through the back there, which lines up just there, left and right. So when you change it out for a longer one, you just push it through, pull it out, put the new one in, and pop it back. So to put this back properly, we've got two screws here. We've got one little uh, leg there, one little leg there, and this leg going down. So we're going to be putting that back in the same way. Now we can simply just pull this part apart like so. And of course I always fill it full of this white grease which really just, you know, annoys me. I don't really like it because it goes everywhere. From there we just simply need to fish the retainer. So let's put this in the locked position see if we can see it. Okay, where is it? Where is it? There it is there. Okay, so I'm going to have to really zoom you in here. Okay, so where are we? About there. It's not an easy retainer to get to. If if you see this lunk coming out here, about as clear as I can make it. If you can see this lunk coming out here, this little semicircle right here is what we need to push back. So we're just going to push that back, get that pick in there. And when you get it, the barrel will actually come out. And it is not easy to get sometimes. And it doesn't want to move too easy. That's 100% where the retainer is. Right there, just down there. And as you can see, they've left us like half half a moon to kind of push it in on and even if I was to rotate it all the way around the other side will that give me more room to do it there's all this white grease everywhere so it's not easy to okay that might be an easier side all this white grease does not make it easy okay there we go we got it out so the lunk was here I had it to the back and then I pulled from this direction Okay, yucky, yucky white grease. Let's clean it up so we can see what we're seeing. Okay, so I actually lost a part then, stuck to the white grease, this little part here that goes there. Okay, so there's our retainer there. That just pushes down. You don't need a key in there when you push it down. But the only problem is that all these discs will be out of alignment when you try and pull it out of the housing. So you might actually have to rake them as you're getting it out. You've got your five discs, which correspond to the five cuts on the key. They are interchangeable discs, like you pull them out. And they've got little numbers on them as well. If you can see that, that's a number three. Oh, you can't see it. That's a number three. Uh, where's the right spot? See the little number there? So that's number three. That corresponds with the actual um, key. So if I wanted a number five cut, I'd put a number five disc in there. Then it's a sim simple matter of putting them all back together, getting a whole heap of grease on your hands as you do. Once they all marry up and they're all lined up, 
you can pull your key out and push it back in but it won't hold the retainer like a lot of other locks do and then uh, what we do is we slide it back in so we put it up to the plug get our pick again if you can see that push that retainer back in and slide it back in unless I'm sliding it on the wrong way which is a possibility let's try that again push that retainer in slide it all the way in it's all the way in the only problem is we left out this little part which I was meant to flick back in before it all came back together so I'm just going to find that retainer one more time and it looks like this side that I'm doing it on is a little bit easier the first side I was doing it on struggling with can be done but I was struggling with it come on out okay there we go so I've dropped it back just a, a notch now I can put this part back in push the barrel back in there and when that rotates it's out of the circular motion so there it'll it'll allow the circle to rotate there it won't allow the circle to rotate okay so now we've done a rekey so to speak or we've uh, pulled it apart now we're going to pop this one back on there and there's a little trick to this one too you have to find the right little drop in and it's like a little puzzle a lot of locksmiths like little puzzles there we go so it's diagonal spinning it back that spins now we've got um, two screws either side so we can just line them up pop this screw back in here tighten, tighten them both up and the locking is complete again so when we rotate it it drives the back shaft when we put the key in, turn it 180, 180 degrees, take the key out. When you turn the handle, the back shaft won't drive, meaning it's locked, clutching. So that's the Lenlock T handle. Um, this is pretty much the only T handle we kind of fit these days because the quality is just so much more superior to a lot of other T handles and the price is pretty good too. The only thing I don't like about it is just that little retainer and, and also you get a lot of grease on your hands. Some of the factors I do like about it is the strength, the clutching, the ability to use an LW4, LW5 key. Um, the screws that it comes with are even good as well. The finish, the sturdability, the amount of weight that's in that is uh, better and more than a standard T-handle. So if you're still fitting standard T-handles, I'd definitely suggest to check out the Lenlock clutching T-handle, Lenlock. It's definitely a far superior product and the cost, cost over a normal T-handle is approximately about another $5 so worth it in every sense if you're keying somebody's house up and you don't want to pull this apart you get this key here then you match the rest of the house to it or you can if you are just adding a T handle you get the customers key and if they're using an LW4 or W5 you can rekey this to suit they also do make mailbox locks as well so you can do the mailbox the garage and the rest of the house is fairly compatible with standard locks to this C4 LW5 anyway so anyway, that's how to find the retainer. Um, I had another locksmith, he says, oh, how do you get them apart? So now at least there's a simple video on how you get it apart. And even, even where I was pulling it on the wrong side, it was still possible, but one side's a little easier than the other. Leave your comments down below if you use them, if you like them, or what you think about this particular lock. And thanks for watching.